Hello and welcome to WVU Extension today. I'm your host, Joel Brown, and welcome to fall. What is more iconic about fall than pumpkins? Today we're going to learn all about pumpkins. Let's head down on the farm and learn how pumpkins grow. Hi folks, Josh Pepelowski here with WVU Extension Service, coming to you from Greenbrier County. We're standing here in a pick your own pumpkin patch, or what will be a pick your own pumpkin patch, just outside of Lewisburg, West Virginia, uh, here at Lewisburg Lanterns. So, I uh, want to want to uh, talk to you a little bit today about uh, pumpkin production, and you know, it's a, a, a fruit we all love. Uh, each year, American farmers plant over 60,000 acres of pumpkins, producing over 2 billion pounds of pumpkins. So uh, it's a crop that uh, we all love, um, and uh, and these pumpkins, you know, they they come in all different sizes. So we have pumpkins all the way down to less than a pound. To uh, the world record is just over 2,500 pounds. Um, so it's a broad range. Uh, the majority of the pumpkins you're going to find out here are are, uh, are jack o' lantern size. So they're in that uh, 10 to 25 pound range. Um, obviously, right now we've got a lot of leaf. Uh, leaves still on the uh, the plants. They're they're uh, setting fruit now, and and those pumpkins are growing. Uh, we're going to come back here in probably a month or so, um, and the leaves will have died off, and and it'll be time to time to pick a few. So pumpkins fall under the cucurbit uh, family. So underneath there, you have cucumbers, you have squash, uh, pumpkins. Um, so when you buy that can of pumpkin at the pumpkin puree at the store, a lot of times the majority of that pumpkin puree is actually a squash variety, some, some type of winter squash. Um, because of the categories and, and the species there are out there, uh, there's about three different species that can fall underneath that pumpkin category. Um, so we have, have winter squash or uh, pie squash, something like this, uh, this kushaw here. And so, uh, they make an excellent pie. Um, that's the reason we use them in preserves. So, uh, so that is one thing that uh, you know you should know when you're out there. Um, here today, this is all uh, mostly a, a, a jack-o'-lantern patch for the most part. These pumpkins out here. Um, so we're going to go out here and we're going to show you some some differences uh, in the plants. Show you how to identify a male and a female flower and those type of things for your own pumpkin patch there at home. All right, folks. Every year we get quite a few questions into the office about. Um, my cucumbers or my pumpkins, my squash, they're not flowering, uh, they're not producing fruit. Um, so with, a, with any of the cucurbits, they actually have two separate flowers. They have male flowers and female flowers. Um, so the male flowers actually are only good for, for a couple hours um, each day. They'll put up a new flower. So this flower here, you can see a big long stem. Um, and that male flower is gonna is gonna open up early that morning, um, and then close that afternoon. Once it closes, it's done. A new male flower will then open up the next day. So we've got a male flower here that you can see. The female flower is always gonna have a baby fruit attached to it. So here we can see a female flower that's opened up, and we can see this this fruit that has not been fertilized yet. Um, so if this flower is not fertilized, you'll sometimes see uh, that fruit will shrivel up and die. Um, and so if you, if you have a lot of those going on, um, where you see little tiny fruit or the tips of the fruit that are dying um, before they really mature, uh, that can be issues with pollination sometimes for the most part. Uh, that's a big place that we look. You know, we gotta have pollinators out here uh, to produce these crops. So we're looking uh, for pollinators here in the crop. Sometimes it can be a, a fertilization issue as far as nutrient wise um, or some environmental issues. But for a lot of times, uh, what happens when that fruit doesn't actually mature, it just shrivels up and falls off, uh, is was we don't have the pollinators out here that we should. Um, so when you're looking at your uh, cucurbits there at the house, um, pay attention, you know, if you're getting, getting a whole lot of male flowers or if you're not finding any female flowers, but those are all kind of indicators that we're going to ask you when you do call into the office and you have, have questions. But uh, those are things for you to look for out in your pumpkin patches.
All right, folks, growing pumpkins doesn't come without its problems. Um, you can see we're standing here in a patch that doesn't quite look as good as what we've uh, seen here earlier. We've got some uh, some powdery mildew issues uh, going on here. So if, when you look at those, uh, the upper surface of the leaf or even underneath the leaf um, in the lower part on the stems, um, you'll see almost like a, a flower appearance uh, on the leaf. So that's, uh, that's a disease, a, a fungus that we call powdery mildew. Um, you know, as we, we scout this patch, we also see some, some striped and spotted cucumber beetles that can uh, carry some diseases for us, um, as well as some, some squash bug uh, damage that we have going on. Uh, so those are all things that you can run into um, when you are growing these at home. And, uh, and we hope that uh, if you do have those issues or have questions, that you give your local county extension office a call um, uh, we'll be happy to happy to come out, help you, uh, give those recommendations that you need to, to make sure that you grow the best possible crop you can. So uh, just some things for you to be aware of and, uh, and know what's going on out there uh, in the field. All right, folks, and the last uh, part of our pumpkin production we're going to have out here in the field uh, is the harvest. So um, you want to make sure when you harvest those pumpkins that you leave plenty of stem, especially like with the jack-o'-lantern case. Uh, you want to have that handle. Um, this being freshly uh, freshly picked, that, that uh, stem is still pretty soft. You don't want to put too much pressure as far as uh, picking that up, holding on to it. Um, also, if, if we do have disease in the patch, you, you want to go through and and harvest those uh, those pumpkins there um, after they turn orange and before that whole vine uh, decides to die and start dying back into the stem. We don't want that stem to rot because it's going to carry to carry rot on down into the pumpkin. So uh, just some things to be aware of, and I think we're gonna gonna take it from here and and send it uh, send it over to the kitchen, and uh, we'll see what kind of good things we can we can make from there. And now we go from pumpkin farming to pumpkin preserving. Hello and welcome to the kitchen. My name is Hannah Fincham and I work with the West Virginia University Extension Service in Randolph County. So today we are going to learn how to take that pumpkin from the field where Josh just was and put it into our baked goods or entrees, anything you can think of. So what you want to look for if you are buying a pumpkin in the store is a heavy pumpkin for its size. So this looks small, but it's pretty heavy for its size. That's a good thing. We also want to look for a nice thick stem. Now the pumpkin that Josh had had a nice green stem because it had just been harvested. These pumpkins we harvested a couple weeks ago, so the stem has turned brown, it's dried out, and that's okay because we can actually store pumpkins for quite some time in a cool, dry, dark place. So what we like to do, we can set the pumpkin on its bottom just like this and have a nice knife to cut down through it. However, the stem is there and it kind of makes it difficult to cut. So what I like to do is actually turn the pumpkin on its side and let it roll to a stop. So we're gonna see where it stops. There it is. So it's got a nice, um, nice surface on the bottom. That's where it stopped. So we're gonna take our big knife and we're gonna cut right down through this pumpkin. All the way through, we can actually kind of tear them apart. So now we have two nice sides of our pumpkins and I'm going to take my knife and actually go around, let me move this one out of the way a little. I'm actually just gonna go around where the seeds are. Right. So you can see I kind of scored the outside. And I'm going to grab just a, any type of bowl will work, but I have a nice big spoon. You can use a serrated spoon. So I'm gonna move right over here and scoop everything into my bowl. So we have both of the cut sides down on a jelly roll pan or a pan with sides. We wanna make sure it has sides because we're gonna add water to it. So I already have my oven preheated to 400 degrees and a pumpkin of this size is probably only going to need a half an hour. A pumpkin that's a little bit bigger might need 45 to 60 minutes. So what I'm going to do is gonna put this in the oven all right, so I'm gonna put that right on top. And I have some water 
I don't like to put any more than two cups. This is two cups of water. So it just makes it easier to not have to carry a tray with water. So I add it once it's in there. And it looks like our other ones are ready. We're gonna poke them. So we want them to be pork tender. I'm gonna move them up here so you can see. Oh, I'm gonna move them. Here we go. So I have these nice pumpkins here. And if, oh, that looks great. So I'm going to let them cool here for a little bit while we work on our pumpkin seeds and then we'll get back to that. So we have all kinds of seeds here and we want to separate the actual seeds from the flesh. And the best way to do that is just to get your hands dirty. Now, we're going to put our pumpkins in a little colander and we are going to go wash them and dry them. So we're just rinsing any of the big, um, hopefully the big fibers off, and then we're gonna dry them, and then we get to it. All right, here are my seeds. Oh, those look very nice. We got most of the uh, fibrous or fleshy part off of the seeds. Now, all we need is a little olive oil and a little bit of salt. Just a tad. And if you want to choose other seasonings, that works fine too. All right, so we're just going to mix that up a little bit and we're going to put it on a pan that's covered with foil and grease. So my pan's already foiled and greased. So I'm going to put them on there. Don't those look nice? Now, these go in a 250 degree oven for about 45 minutes, turning occasionally in between. So I have my food processor here. Each pumpkin should give you, depending on its size, uh, about three to four cups of puree. So if you have several pie pumpkins and want to make and freeze puree, that is wonderful. That is what I do. I like to freeze puree. And speaking of preserving our puree, I just want to make sure to let you know that it, the only way to safely preserve pumpkin puree uh, is to freeze it. So it is not safe uh, to can pumpkin puree because it's too thick to heat the coolest part of the jar in an adequate amount of time. So we freeze it. Now you can preserve pumpkin in chunks by canning, uh, but not, not in a puree form. All right, so you can see I'm kind of getting around. Now this is still pretty hot, but I'm gonna take my, you can let it cool a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in my food processor here. And I want to try and scrape down as much as possible up against the skin without getting any of the skin. So we want to get as much of the fleshy part as possible here in our pumpkin without getting the skin. And this, so I have lots of pumpkin over here. I could probably scrape, scrape the flesh of that a little bit more. But I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on and hit the puree button. All right, here we go. And it's done. So we'll take that off. And take the lid off. Okay. See what we have. Look at that. And that pumpkin gave us about three cups of nice pumpkin puree to use in your favorite recipe. My family, our favorite thing to do with pumpkin puree is actually to make pumpkin ice cream. And it is delicious. Highly recommend. Now, if you don't have pumpkins and you have some other type of squash, most squash are interchangeable in recipes. So you could use, I have an acorn squash here. And there are plenty of other squashes that you can use um, in place of pumpkin. Okay, now let's go check on those pumpkin seeds. I bet they're ready to take out of the oven. Oh, 
Oh, look at those. Nice and golden brown. And there you have it, folks. If you have some pot pumpkins, there's always things to do with those. Make lots of your favorite baked goods or cooked, cooked products. Use that pumpkin puree and you can use the uh, roasted seeds on salads or soups or just pop them in your mouth. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Hannah. And now we head over to Amy and her family and learn all about a fun game of pumpkin bowling. Hi, I'm Amy Cook, the Family and Community Development Agent for WVU Extension Service in Braxton and Clay Counties. Today I have a few helpers with me. Wyatt, Chloe, Amy. Emmy. As you can see, we really love our pumpkins around here. We love all shapes, all sizes, colors, all the different textures that they come in. Oh. We, yeah, we love them all. So one of our favorite family activities in the fall is pumpkin bowling. And it's really easy and it's really fun and you don't need any special equipment. In fact, everything you need is right here. A pumpkin and some household items that you might have. So come have fun with us. Did you know you can burn 150 to 300 calories by bowling? And it's, sometimes it's easier to cut the stem off whenever you're pumpkin bowling. Did you know bowling strengthens muscles, improves flexibility and balance, and it improves hand-eye coordination? Straight. And picking up the pins gets you exercise. What did you use for oh. the pins? Uh, paper towels. Yeah, so and today we used some paper towels. This one has been too. We used some toilet paper. These are common things you can find in your house, so it's not hard to do. Get out there and have fun. Did you know that bowling is fun? And I'm going to use it with toilet paper. Yay! How come like, this one's like, like off the edge and it's not falling? Yeah. Then you get to go down and pick them back up, right? And get more exercise. Yeah. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Try it again. <laughs> oh, we got one. Got one, keep going. We got two. Woohoo! Well, I hope you had fun with my, how should I put it, rambunctious family when we were bowling today. We sure enjoy it. I wanted to let you know that if you are interested in bowling, if you have a bowling alley in your area, they do usually reserve uh, certain days or times for senior bowling and also family nights as well. So you can enjoy that and not have to worry about competitions or anybody taking it really seriously. You can just go have fun and get some really good exercise. I hope you enjoyed it, we sure did. And now it's time for my favorite portion of the episode pumpkin treat time. Let's head over to Carrie and learn all about a double layer pumpkin dessert. Hello, I'm Carrie Cart. I work for WVU Extension Service in the Kanawha County office. And I'm here today to make for you a double layered pumpkin dessert. It's like pie, but it's yummy. It calls for two nine inch pie plans or a, you know, a larger one. I'm gonna use an aluminum pie pan, makes it simple. Um, the bottom is a graham cracker crust. Um, but it has very little butter in it, just enough to keep it together. Now I went ahead and purchased graham cracker crumbs. Uh, makes it very easy to make, but if you have actual graham crackers, you can definitely roll those out and crush them on your own. Um, so I've got my uh, graham crackers here in a nice bowl and I have melted butter. It is reduced fat butter um, or reduced fat margarine, if you will. Um, so let's go ahead and stir the two together and make the crust. 
You can use very, very soft margarine or butter, or I have melted mine because it was quite hard and I wanted to make it easy to pull together. So I'm just gonna pour it in there. I'm only making a half a recipe because I just don't have that big of a family. So I'm just gonna make one pie today. You wanna get that butter all distributed out because that's what's gonna hold all the graham crackers together and make the crust. So I've got that pretty well mixed. I find that the easiest way to get this into the pie pan is with your hands. Now I'm gonna slip a glove on here so that I don't have to be so messy about it. So I get my pie dish. I'm just gonna go ahead and move that into the pie dish. And then you're gonna firmly press down on that graham cracker crumble. You want it to be pretty firm. You want to mush it all together so it adheres because it's going to have to bake. Once I get this all put together, we're going to bake it in an oven for 350 degrees for about five to seven minutes. Um, you want it to get um, nice and lightly browned and held together so that makes a nice crust. Okay, I'm going to get that in the oven and then we'll get ready to make our second layer, which is the cream cheese layer. Okay, so we've baked off our um, crumb bottom. Uh, it's cooling very nicely on the side, and now we're making our cream cheese filling, which is the second, the, the next layer of it. Um, I whipped together Nufachelle, which is a reduced fat cream cheese. You can use any brand that you want, but you don't want to use a fat free because that's not really going to set up very well for you. Um, to that, we had a little bit of skim milk and then a sugar substitute. Um, I use Splenda. It's what I had on hand, um, but it cooks up very nicely if you're ever going to cook. Now, this is obviously not a cook dessert we just kind of keep putting it together but it does cook very nicely if you use it for that so I have whipped my cream cheese Niff and Chow, with my milk and my um, my uh, sugar substitute and I've got a nice little blend here and the next thing that we're gonna add to it is a cool whip topping or a frozen topping I've used a light version of it Biggest thing you gotta remember is this has to be thawed. So you wanna definitely pull it out of the freezer the day before or the morning before you make it. That way it's completely thawed when you get ready to use it. That keeps it nice and fluffy. So we're gonna incorporate that into our cream cheese. So I've got it here. I'm gonna dump my uh, whipped topping in there. Nice and light and fluffy. And you're just gonna kinda work it in and stir it in. You don't wanna whip it too hard because that will break it down. You wanna keep it nice and fluffy, but you do want it to be fully incorporated in there. And this just makes a nice, creamy, rich layer on top of that graham cracker crust. Okay, I've got that nicely pulled together. Now there's my pie dish, and I'm just gonna spread this on top. You have to be careful when you spread it that you don't pull up the graham cracker crust, um, cause it will stick to it and pull it off. And so you kinda gotta work a little carefully with it. I will tell you it is easier in a big nine by 13 dish, cause you got a little more space to work with, but I like the fact, I like it in a pie dish. I think it looks prettier that way. It resembles more of a pie. Okay, and there it is. Okay, we're gonna put that in the refrigerator so we can start to chill. And then we're gonna get ready and we're gonna make our top layer, which is our pumpkins. Now this layer is made up of pudding as well as pumpkin and a little bit of that more whipped topping. Um, so it calls for instant sugar-free vanilla pudding. You wanna make sure it's instant because we're not cooking it. And you definitely want the sugar-free that helps keep the calorie count down on it. Um, it also calls for pumpkin. Now Hannah showed us how to make wonderful homemade pureed pumpkin, um, but I didn't do that. Um, I went ahead to the grocery store and I bought the canned pumpkin. You wanna make sure it's canned pumpkin, pure pumpkin, not a pie mix or a pie filling mix. Um, it doesn't matter what brand you use. You can use an off brand from the store. You can use a name brand. It doesn't matter um, because if you look at the ingredients, it's simply pumpkin. They're all pumpkin, but you can see it definitely says 100% pumpkin on those. All right. So we whipped up our instant pudding with just a little bit of skim milk and the recipe even says it's very thick. I wanted to show you just how thick it is. Everybody says, I must be doing something wrong, but you're not. Look at that. 
It sticks to the spoon, it's so thick, okay? It's a glob when it comes down. That's okay. We're gonna take it back to the mixer and add the pumpkin into it and then add our topping into it. I'm using my stand mixer. Um, makes it real easy and quick, uh, but you could use a hand beater if you had one. Um, you could use a hand whisk, but you know you have to use some muscles on that. It's gonna take you some work to do it. So let's put this into the mixer uh, with our pumpkin and we'll be ready to finish up our pie. Okay, so I added my pumpkin as well as my spices. Now I used a pumpkin pie spice mix. Um, which is really easy to use. Um, but if you don't have it, you can, the, the directions have the mix for the cinnamon, uh, the ginger and the, and the cloves that are in it. Um, but I want you to see, look at how beautiful orange that is. Isn't it gorgeous? It smells divine. You can smell the yummy cinnamon in it. Uh, so the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of our frozen whipped topping to that. And we're gonna finish out our pie. So I've got my, uh, light whipped topping here. I'm gonna pull it out and add a little bit to that. All together, you're gonna use about half of a container for this recipe. And once again, I'm just gonna kind of mix that in. You don't wanna beat it too hard. You lose all that nice fluffiness of that topping, but you do wanna make sure that it's completely blended in. So I'm just gonna lightly stir it here. If you're using your own homemade puree, like Hannah showed you how to use, um, the recipe calls for a 15 ounce can, which is gonna be just almost exactly two cups, just a hair shy of two cups, okay? Um, but your color may different, be a little bit different than mine. Um, you know, when they put um, pumpkin in, into cans and process it, um, it does darken the color just a little bit. So if you notice yours is a little bit lighter in color, that's fine. It, It'll still be safe and it'll taste great and you'll, you'll know where your pumpkins came from and that you made it yourself. All right, so I've got it really good here. Now we had this in the refrigerator. You definitely want to chill it as much as possible. The cooler you can get the pie in between this two layer, the easier it is to put on it. And once again, I'm simply going to dump that pumpkin on the top. Carefully, it won't. It won't pull up like it did the graham cracker crust as easily, but you can't, you don't want to mix the two layers together. You definitely want it to be two distinct layers. Um, sometimes I just don't even take it. Sometimes I leave the little white around the edges. I think that makes it look pretty. It's also a little bit easier if you want to cheat some, but I like it. I think it looks pretty when it's got a white, uh, white trim to it, I call it. But there you go. It's just real easy. We just spread it around. Now this has to refrigerate for at least one hour. Um, you can easily make it the night before uh, and let it chill overnight and serve it the next day. That's fine. Um, but you've definitely got to give it at least an hour so that it all comes together and you can pull it out. Um, you can sprinkle the top with a few toasted nuts if you like. That would be a lovely addition. Remember, that does add a few calories if you do that. Um, so I elected to use a fat-free whipped topping out of the can. That way I can make little pretty dollops on the top. Oh, perfect. Look at that with a beautiful little star right on the top. Really hope you make this dessert. It is a lovely dessert to have. It's a wonderful thing to take to friends and families for get togethers. Um, and I truly hope that you enjoy it. Thanks, Carrie. That looks absolutely delicious. Thank you all for tuning in and going on a trip down on the pumpkin patch with us. Tune in next time.